Today we've run into some knob and tube wiring. Now for those of you who are not aware, knob and tube wiring looks like this. Now oftentimes we'll talk about wire uh, kind of loosely and use it as a term to describe more than just one wire. Uh, oftentimes we're referring to a cable assembly like Romex. Knob and tube wiring is different in that the individual wires or conductors are separate from each other. They're not in a single cable assembly, but they're ran separately. And there's also only two conductors instead of three. There's no ground wire involved in this older style of wiring. Knob and tube wiring was installed from about 1900 to about 1940. So you can see this installation has obviously been here for a very long time. Both of these individual wires here are the same color. So really the only way to see which one is hot is to use a non-contact electrical tester and it should light up when we get close to the one that is the hot wire. So that one did not light up. So I'm guessing it's this one over here. Sure enough. So this is our hot leg and this is our neutral going back. The insulation is a combination of kind of like a fibrous cloth material along with rubber underneath, if I'm not mistaken. As you may have already probably figured out, the reason this is called knob and tube wiring is because of the types of components that are used to assemble it. Right here, we're looking at one side of the tube, and if we look at the other side, you can see it's a little bit different shape because they push it through from one side. So there's the other side of it. If I kind of grab it, I probably would be able to move it a little bit. But you can see right there is the other side of the tube. So they push those through. Basically, they use these to insulate the conductors from any wood structural components. And then the conductors are simply fed through those tubes. Now over here, you can see this is one of the knobs. The knobs are basically what were used to clamp the wire in place before it went into the rest of the framing and through the tubes. And that's exactly what's going on here. You can see it's coming out of the tube and going into or onto the knob, which is holding that conductor in place. And then finally, the wires made their way out of those knobs and into these insulators, which lead us down to the fixture that was used in this particular installation. Then coming out of the bottom of this fixture here, there's a couple of wires, which I guess originally would have been connected to the light fixture. Now the way this uh, comes apart is actually pretty nifty. I was trying to figure it out uh, myself. I gotta remember this is live yet here. If you look closely in here, there's a couple of screws. You can't really see them very good right now, but uh, I was gonna maybe take those out, but then I realized that if I just turn this, like so, and then this comes loose. So you can see right under here, there is the uh, two prongs that were connected and I can't really see any designation whatsoever for like polarity uh, as far as which is the hot and which is the neutral. Pretty amazing that this stuff is still as functional as it is and really well done. Like the installation was fantastic and knob and tube can be perfectly safe to leave in your building wiring as long as you leave it as it was and you don't add to it or change it. Just make sure that it is in good condition and it, and it should be fine. Now I have seen that some insurance companies are leery of it and so depending on the situation you might need to check with your insurance company as to whether or not uh, they will insure a house that has knob and tube wiring still in use but in a lot of houses a lot of like the lighting circuitry is still being done with knob and tube and obviously these days with the LED lights uh, they don't really draw a lot of current so it really is not a huge deal to me uh, that you're still seeing some knob and tube in use uh, because the loads shouldn't be very significant now if you were trying to like pull or use like an electric resistance heater on knob and tube that's definitely something that I would avoid another thing to pay attention to is that this stuff is designed to be in open space you can see the wires are just kind of uh, free there's space above and below and around them and that allows any heat buildup to dissipate nicely uh, if you are going to insulate your attic which a lot of times you'll see knob and tube wiring in attics. You absolutely should not 
insulate around your knob and tube wiring if it is still in use because that can, can cause the heat to build up and ultimately could be hazardous. Now I don't know if you're if you're just again just lighting circuits with a few LED lights on the old knob and tube circuitry it's probably going to be fine but still keep that in mind uh, you know you want to leave the knob and tube system the way it was originally designed and operating is the way that it should continue to operate. Now I tried to do a bunch of reading on uh, whether or not you can just disconnect knob and tube in the ceiling even if it's hot and leave it there. Uh, and there were some situations where in different areas of the country I believe they may allow that instead of having to have it come into a junction box. But my honest opinion is that you probably are gonna to need to run it into a junction box if it's still energized. But I will briefly explain what was described, um, and that was basically to take, let's say this is the hot wire here, and we would clip it off and it would have its extra. A lot of times this knob is gonna uh, be more spaced out from where it goes through a tube. So let's say that this knob was over here a little bit. You would then take that wire and then wrap it back around um, the opposite side of the knob. So we clip it here and then wrap it around the wire so it would be as if it were over here. And then tape it all up really, really good so that that conductor is never going to come into contact with anything. And theoretically, that may work some of the time in some areas. But in my opinion, if there's still power going to your knob and tube wiring, the best practice is going to be to install a junction box just like what we're looking at here and we're gonna pull these conductors into the box which we'll do that here in a minute at the end of the video and tape them up really good put a, a wire nut on the end to insulate them and then just leave it like that if you know for sure that the knob and tube wiring is not being used anymore and that it's disconnected and de-energized and all of that then it is fine to go ahead and just cover it up. In this situation, if there was no power on these wires, I would just simply clip them off as far back as I could and just pull the wires out of the ceiling and then have no problem covering up whatever is left so long as it is absolutely disconnected from the rest of the electrical system. Note that once you uh, disconnect a knob and tube system, you are not allowed to reconnect it. That is the end. It, it is... If it's currently set up and working properly, that's fine. But if you disconnect it, just know that it's a permanent decision. You're not gonna go back and try to fix a knob and tube wiring situation, as far as I understand. The power is now off, so we're gonna go ahead and disconnect our wires here. Crazy that the guy that put this together probably is dead now. So you know how I was saying that you should not add on to a knob and tube wiring system. Well, this one was definitely added on to. I'm just gonna put a quick clip in here of, uh, of all the crazy stuff that was going on with this uh, particular <laughs> this particular one. It was very crazy. This uh, insulation is in, I don't know, surprisingly like fine. Shapes. We're just going to pull these, these insulators off for now. Now we'll just pull our wires into our box. Right, we'll clip these off. A little bit of extra. You guys want to see something sad? So this is a nice pair of Nipex needle nose. Well, I was working with my coworker like the week I, I bought them and I'm like this is de-energized right you shut the power off to this furnace and he's like yep 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 good to go good to go and uh, I went ahead and snipped a couple of wires and poof and just like that had a blown uh, uh whatever all right I'm just gonna safe off these wires now with a wire nut Now I'm going to grab a little bit of electrical tape. Whenever you're trying to tape something where you don't want the tape to like come loose, you should use some high quality tape like this uh, Scotch Super 33, uh, 33 plus. I'll link to this in the description, but 
high quality electrical tape is worth the investment if you want it to actually like stay on for a long period of time, which is what we want in this case. All right, there we go. We'll just bend these over now. That's all there is to it. Those are safed off and uh, and good to go. So we're not going to be using any power from this box anymore. I might actually run a separate circuit up into this box to give us the option of having a center light in this room. For now, that's all we have to do for terminating our old knob and tube wiring. I might actually pull a new cable up into this box, some Romex, so that we have the option of using this as a center light in the room as well. Uh, but in theory, we could just uh, you know sheetrock around this now and just put a blank cover on there. I'd be curious to know what your guys' experience have been with knob and tube systems. Have you uh, terminated them in a junction box just like this, or have you actually like left them in the ceiling and then sheetrocked over it and covered it up? If some of you electrical inspectors or electricians out there would like to chime in on this, definitely comment and I'll do my best to pin the comments that are the most relevant. Otherwise, just upvote the comments that you think uh, have the best information in them. I always learn a ton from the comment section, so thank you guys for all of the input that you guys give there. All right, we're gonna start installing some recessed lights uh, and continue our project here. So if you guys wanna see that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss out. My dad was telling me there's this house uh, in town here that has like the original knob and tube wiring still going through like the entire house and it's all functional. So uh, I might try to contact the guy that owns that house and maybe do a tour of the original knob and tube and just kind of understanding how that works and just seeing how they had it set up from before. Might be kind of an interesting video. So if you guys wanna see that, make sure you subscribe as well. Comment down below if you think that'd be interesting. Also, bonus information. This is the Milwaukee Rocket Light. Uh, I'm not using it right now because it does this very terrible thing. Turn it on and it causes an unbelievable flicker. So this light was like $300, I think. It was on a really good sale, but it's just such a bummer. And like every setting, it flickers. It just flickers at a different frequency or not as bad, depending on which setting it's at. But over here, these Craftsman hood lights that I picked up on clearance at Lowe's, they don't flicker at all, which is fantastic for video. Video lights are kind of a like really important thing for making quality videos for you guys. And um, like actual video lights that you buy like from B&H Photo or something cost an incredible amount of money. So I like work lights better because they're more rugged and all that. But Milwaukee, please make a non-flickering like floodlight. Like look at this. Here's another one. You know, just take my word for it, but this one flickers just as much as that other one. Uh, so these things are like direct current batteries. They shouldn't be flickering. Flickering comes from like 60 hertz power coming out of the wall. It shouldn't be on my LED battery powered lights. That just like inherently should be a feature of battery powered lights is that they do not flicker. All right, I'll talk to you guys in the next one.